In case you haven't had a chance to um, see him, Professor Peter Shickley will be at the University of Illinois. Uh, I know you've had a chance because, uh, Peter, you've been in Bloomington Normal, in fact, at Illinois State University Union. Yes, and uh, actually we played uh, uh, Champagne before, too, several years ago. Uh, the program is, is uh, somewhat different this time, but uh, we have been there before. So you must have done something right while you were here. I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> the, uh, the fact of the matter is, PDQ Bach happens to be one of your, uh, oh, I suppose, discoveries. Yes, I have to take sole, sole credit or blame, depending on your point of view, for, for his work. <laughs> and now, even though the show has changed, you will uh, still be performing some of his music, no doubt. Oh, yes. Yeah, we will be doing the bassinata for bassoon and piano, uh, the 12 Quite Heavenly Songs, which is a big song cycle based on the signs of the Zodiac, and the <laughs> Gold Brick Variations for Piano Two Hands, and the infamous opera Hansel and Gretel and Ted and Alice which is an opera and one unnatural act. Uh, we will also be doing, a, I will also be giving an illustrated slide lecture on the life and times of PDQ Bach, just to place it all in the proper historical perspective. Mm -hmm. Don't you have some sort of a secret source now, too, that, uh, that I've read about? Well, that's for the most recent discovery. Yes, yeah, so this is a full-length three-act opera called The Abduction of Figaro, which is only partially discovered, but is being given to me a few pages at a time by an anonymous uh, uh, person who meets me in out-of-the-way places and refers to himself only as Deep Note. Uh, <laughs> and I have to assume that this, the manuscript of this opera is probably in the hands of some descendants of Johann Sebastian Bach, because uh, uh, the Bach family has been trying to erase any evidence of PDQ's existence ever since he started composing. And uh, uh, I would assume that the manuscript is in their hands and that Deep Note for some, has some reason that he'd like to see it performed. Uh, but, of course, I haven't tried to find out who he is because I don't want to endanger my source, at least until I have the entire opera. <laughs> I'm not sure it's worth it, but... Uh... <laughs> well, it's, a, it's become an obsession, you know. I really have very little control over myself in this matter, and it seems to me that... Uh, that the world, whether it wants to or not, uh, deserves to have the music of Peter Kubach foisted upon them. That's really what drives you on, doesn't it? I think so. Yeah. You've certainly left your mark on uh, music, and a lot of folks aren't going to forgive you for it. But um... <laughs> Well, I, just, I, I figure they laughed at Columbus, too, uh, and now there's a Columbus Day, so I just have to uh, look ahead to the future there. Seriously, you are a delight, and everybody that takes you in says, hey, be sure, be sure, and catch Professor Peter Shickley when he makes an appearance in the area. Primarily, colleges are your thing, aren't they? Well, no, not necessarily. Uh, this program, the Intimate PDQ Bach uh, that we're doing, uh, there is, uh, we play a lot of colleges, but the rest of my touring is... Uh, the situations in which I appear as a guest soloist of symphony orchestras. So I have appeared with, with uh, symphony orchestras all over the country, ranging from the Boston Symphony and the Los Angeles Philharmonic and the Chicago Symphony uh, down to the New York Pickup Ensemble, uh, which is the orchestra that we use for our Christmas time concerts in New York. Uh, so in that case, I play many more uh, regular symphony orchestras than colleges. Mm -hmm. But you, you went to school, didn't you? Yes, I, I went to Swarthmore College first, and then I uh, was a composition major at uh, Juilliard in New York. I see. So the business of being from southern North Dakota or northern South Dakota? Well, uh, Fargo, North Dakota is my hometown. So it's, uh, uh, although Hoople, uh, North Dakota, which many people think doesn't exist and does, uh, the University of Southern North Dakota at Hoople might be a little bit hard to find, but I actually do come from Fargo. I see. But New York is your home now, then? Yes, I've lived there for quite a while. Yeah. 22nd of February is the date that uh, you'll be coming. And um, really, to make this all clear, if anybody's listening, we're talking about all these, these uh, I suppose, long-haired-sounding uh, pieces. Really, it's a lot of fun for the audience, isn't it? Oh, yeah. There's a, there's a, uh, the audiences uh, tend to be laughing pretty much from start to finish. Yeah. You don't really have to appreciate, uh, I suppose, big concert orchestras to uh, really get a kick out of PDQ Bach. No, I, I tell you, particularly in the live concerts, even more than the records, uh, there's an awful lot of visual stuff going on that doesn't get on the records. And uh, uh, if, even if you don't know classical music very well, there's a, there's a lot there that you could get in on. Yeah. This is quite a compliment, and I guess I mean it uh, very sincerely. You have done for orchestra sort of what uh, Victor Borga has done for piano. I guess in a way, right. Uh, uh, I, I have always, 
I just, you know, what a lot of people don't realize is that basically most satirists tend to make fun of what they like, not what they don't like. Uh, Victor Borges studied to be a, a concert pianist, and Anna Russell studied to be an opera singer. And, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that, although I never planned it, that one of the reasons that P.D.Q. Bach is a, an 18th century composer is because Bach and Mozart are two of my favorite composers. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, I, a lot of the stuff is, is for orchestra. Do you ever find anybody who's in the uh, real realm of music who does criticize anything you do, or do they think it's all pretty funny, too? Most musicians tend to enjoy it, but there are some people who feel that classical music is sacred and should not be tampered with. Uh, but that's just a, a, it's just a different viewpoint from mine. To me, it doesn't detract at all from the original uh, to make fun of it uh, at all. And as I say, I, it's, it's a matter of making fun of what you like. Mm -hmm. One last question or so before we let you go. But Did you always find yourself to be, uh, I don't know, a little off the wall? They always say that people who are interested in comedy are always just a little bit offbeat, and I wonder if, if that was the case with you. I've always been a, a, a big ham, yeah, and I, I don't know how old you are, but, but my my when I was about 10 years old, I was a fanatic Spike Jones fan. And, uh, Spike, All right. Uh, Spike Jones, uh, you know, in the 40s and 50s, uh, did take off the, the pop music of the day and also some of the... Uh, better known classics. Yeah, like the Tennessee Vaults or whatever. Where I went, he and he had a version of Carmen, for instance, that was that was quite extraordinary. Uh, and when I was when I was a kid, I I spent a lot of time acting out those records. I knew them all by heart. And a few years ago, when I turned my kids onto them, I still I still have most of those things on tape. And uh, uh, when I turned my kids onto them, I I found that I could still mouth those things syllable for syllable. So I think that's. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it all started. Happened to know of a musician who played with the Spike Jones band, in fact, who's now out in California, but used to live in Bloomington. In fact, used to teach music in, in Bloomington Normal Schools, Bill, J Bill Jacoby. Who, Bill Jacoby. Well, I, I saw the show a couple of times. He had a very funny show. But aside from uh, a few of the performers who you know were listed on the records, like George Rock uh, and Doodles Weaver, I, I didn't really know their names. Yeah. But it was great, and uh, so was your show. In fact, I really want to catch it when it comes to town, Ac actually at the uh, University of Illinois in Shambana on uh, February 22nd. It's going to be 8 o'clock in the evening, and I understand there still are a lot, of, uh, a lot of good seats available. Okay, very good. Peter, thank you very much. We've had a chance to visit before when, when, you, come to, when you came to town here, but uh, we've never met in person, and maybe we can do that sometime. hope so. Great. Thank you, Professor. Thank you.